So I'm back with more pillow talk with my one cushion. I'm gonna figure this out if it's the last thing I do because I'm not changing the name. But today I wanted to talk about casual dating. I feel like that's a hot topic and a hot focus for us millennials because it's something that goes on and we, excuse me, we're working, we're working. Um, it's something that we, I wouldn't say struggle with, but it kind of goes on and we have conflicts because some people want it, some people don't, then you have people who want something serious, hooking up with someone who wants something casual, or you have people coming together under the assumption that it's going to be casual and then some person starts caring more, some person, one person, one person starts caring more and it becomes like a big, big issue because the, um, nothing's changed, you know, they came under the assumption that it wouldn't be serious and one person caught feelings and that's not necessarily going to change anything. Um, so for me, casual dating is a no. No, 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 no. But everyone is different, you know? I have just come to learn what I like, what I don't like, what makes me feel good. And I've always been the type of person that I can't change, you know, no matter what. Like, I kind of have like a, I've always had this, this mindset and this vision of how I wanted to live my life and how, um, and what makes me happy and I've stuck to it. And when it comes to everything else, when it comes to creating, when it comes to my job, my education, it has worked for me. So in a way that makes me happy, in a way that makes me feel complete. So I'm not going to um, turn my back on that for temporary satisfaction. I feel like in the long run, that's not helpful. So I talked to my friend about it, you know, just like a quick conversation because I already have my own ideas, but I also like to hear how other people feel about it and I like where she went with it because it kind of gave me a good starting point um I think that the main thing casual dating does well we decided the main thing casual dating does it, it fills a void you know but it's a un um it's not a helpful way of doing so but the reason that people will choose to get into that type of situation is because they want to fill a void. They're they're lonely or they crave the benefits of a relationship but not necessarily the complications of a relationship. My stance is that casual dating is much more complicated than actual dating, but we'll get to that eventually. So most cases when people choose to um, casually date, it's because they're not where they want to be on some level, you know? So maybe they're not completely over an ex, maybe they're not where they want to be financially, maybe they feel like they are where they are, where they want to be financially, but they don't have the time to then commit to a relationship because they're committing um, completely to a career. Um, and so they don't, they don't want that um, complication. But it's not, it's not helpful, okay? Because in casual relationships, we're able to bury our feelings, bury our wants, needs, and we don't learn the helpful, um, the helpful forms of communication that we need to be successful. So you can sweep all of your feelings under the rug, you know, and you can go on having this, this, you know, I don't even know what to call it, not relationship, but this, this connection that's, you know, only surface level and you don't have to confront the pain from your past. You don't have to confront the shortcomings you might have been um, faced with in a past situation um, or betrayal, whatever it was. And you can feel 
like you're healing. But the thing with that is anything left unresolved always finds its way to the surface. And to me, I always feel like it's better to handle it sooner rather than later because later it just explodes and it's much bigger than it had to be, you know? So I'd rather take a few, however long it takes, weeks, months, whatever, to really come to terms with something that has hurt me, damaged me, caused me pain, and then to um, get back into the dating world, you know, refreshed and actually ready to give somebody 100% of um, me than to try to not think about it. And I said that in a previous video too about how um, I made that decision during my last breakup to just be me and to face what was happening rather than just, I'm, I don't wanna be home, I'm gonna go out tonight or I don't wanna think about it, I'm gonna talk to this person. I really let myself cry until I couldn't cry. I let myself be sad until I wasn't sad. I let myself do my everyday activities without this person that was a big part of my daily routines so that when the day that I woke up okay, I was really okay. I wasn't pretending to be okay. I wasn't putting up a front for the people that were around me. I was really okay. And I've seen the opposite, you know, I've watched former partners do the opposite and I've watched the way that it all comes crashing down and it's a very, a very sad, um, very sad thing to watch. Um, so, I'm completely against casual relationships because of communication. I feel like our generation is horrible at communication, which is why you would think casual dating is better because you don't have to communicate. But I feel like in any type of relationship, whether it's a friendship, whether it's your family, communication is important, you know? And being able to tell somebody, I want this, I don't want this, um, I want more of this, less of this, I have been feeling like this, the past few times we've hung out I've been feeling less like this the past few times we hung out those things are important you know and if I could trust someone to really be honest and to be open and to be a good communicator in a casual situation maybe my viewpoint would change you know but instead what we see a lot of is people getting to these relationships reaping the benefits from it and then when things get hard or things change they disappear on us you know and they think that it's okay to just stop answering phone calls or stop answering text messages and that can be very damaging to the person that you were um you were connected to or you were sharing a part of yourself no matter how small you became a part of their life you know and i think that out of anything not not out of love not whatever but respect i feel like is a basic human right that we all deserve you know and if i'm gonna deal with you i would like the respect of you telling me that yes we're casually dating but i would appreciate it if it was only you and i or yes we're casually dating and lately i've been thinking about seeing someone else you know just little things like that that you're just you're being honest you're not being sneaky you're not being um secretive because we can feel it you know we can feel it when someone's not being 100 percent and it's feel it when someone is not being you want to come you were eating my plant wow wow i trusted you okay so you were being um a hundred percent stop i lost my train of thought pepper but yeah i feel like you can't trust people that you are casually dating to be honest with you just respect you as a human being because there is that that disconnect if you try to talk about something serious then it's it's not that deep or it's not that serious or you're not my girl you're not my man and that's to me that's just that's not even a sense of being in a relationship or not that's just maturity as a mature adult i should be able to tell you what i like what i need what i require and you should be able to do the same and if I voice an opinion to you, you should be able to hear me out and we, come, we meet at a common ground, you know? That's something that I haven't seen 
in my friends that I have dealt with casual relationships and people who have tried to approach me in a way that is too casual for my liking, I've noticed that, that there's just, it's never a mature, fully functional um, thing, you know? Um, and I feel like it's assumed that casual relationships are fun and they're easier and they're no stress, but I've noticed that they are, to me, they're forced. You know, you have to watch what you say, you have to watch what you do, um, you have to be cautious of, you know, not overstepping a boundary or not um, pushing them too far or making them think you're clingy. And to me, that's just too much thought for me. Like, I like to just be myself and do what feels right. And in most cases, I feel like that's not, like, the both people are working so hard and not falling in love you're not really having fun, you know? If if I was the person that asked you to meet up the past two times, then I'm, uh, I'm not gonna ask again because I'm always the one. Like there's just too much thinking going on, you know? You can't, you can't just call the person to tell them something because you have to think, oh, well, he doesn't care. Like, I don't know, it's just, to me, it's too much thought going on. Too much thought to not overstep anyone's boundaries and I don't see how you can really be yourself that way. And I think being yourself is extremely important. And I'm looking at my palm tree because I don't know what these, these tips mean. Does it mean that it's not getting enough sun or that it's dying? This is my third palm tree, so it better not die. Um, I think that that is super important just being able to have fun like i don't feel like if i was dating someone casually and i just felt like chilling you know like i just felt like spending a weekend just having fun in their company do not eat my palm tree having fun in their company that i could just be like hey like come over let's spend the weekend together and it not feel like oh my god like first she's asking for a weekend next is gonna be a month next we're getting married like no it's just it's too much um the other point i wanted to make is that i feel like there's a double standard um i have been in situations where i feel like i no, like I observe the way that the guy responds like okay so if you're casual dating and no boundaries have been set I feel like it's it's to be assumed that your options are open right that you're able to see other people talk to other people yada 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 so I have been in situations though we're not even not even this in the sense that I'm talking to multiple people but if I am with a guy that has expressed to me that they don't want a commitment, but then another guy like calls me or FaceTimes me or they see a male name on my text messages, there's like this tension and they get upset and it's like a problem. And I'm like, but like, it, it upsets me because I am, I'm good with commitment. I enjoy commitment because then I know what I'm doing. I know where my loyalties lie it's very easy for me to be loyal and, and, and committed, you know, because I don't like expressing myself to too many people as is. I do not like opening up to just people and just doing the dating thing all over. So to me, that's not a problem. And no one has ever had to tell me in a relationship, stop talking to that person, stop talking to that person. Like I personally don't like blurred lines and I don't like putting myself in difficult situations so if I feel like I want to commit to somebody like I'm gonna my friend my male friendships will slowly start to dwindle you know and the the frequency of our, our conversations will dwindle until the point where it's like I really don't talk to them unless it's an emergency or I need something or something like that so by you expressing to me that you don't want anything serious why would I 
cut off my friendships. You know, it's it doesn't make sense because if you did want something um, committed, okay, best believe no one else would be calling my phone. But you expressed that you didn't want anything serious, so we don't have anything serious. So I still have guy friends, and I still. Um, I will still continue the connections because in most cases they help me with my um they're they're like business alliances you know there are other creatives and, and other artists and photographers and stuff that I, I should be contacting with and there's no reason for me to not contact them because it's gonna make you who has no commitment to me uncomfortable like that's that's not fair you know and it's not something like I feel like there's really there's a double standard there like even besides the point but I've even talked to a lot of guys about the whole um, how do you say polygamy thing and polyamory or whatever and the reaction is always the same or like open relationships the reaction is always the same the girl's gonna do it too oh the girl's gonna do it too so if you see something wrong with the woman that you're with seeing other people when she's with you why haven't you made the connection that there might be something wrong with you seeing other women when you're supposedly in love with someone you know it's just it comes it comes down to the whole um emotional intelligence thing and i think that our society hasn't required men to become emotionally intelligent and i don't I don't mean that to be like off-putting and say that all oh, men suck and men are trash, throw them away. I don't believe that because there are definitely um, good guys out there and there are guys that are trying to, to um, tap into their emotional intelligence. But I think that we don't require enough of the connections that we have with men. Like we just want, we just want to be somebody's and we, we don't focus enough on the quality of love that we're getting in return. You know, so I just I think it's it's setting yourself up for 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 her and an unfulfilling just connection. And I know that at times it's hard to wait for the big um, the big love or or whatever. But in the meantime, you're this person that you're dealing with is essentially taking up the space that that person would occupy. And I, God, God has shown me that if you trust him enough to put yourself in the position to accept the blessings, you're gonna get the blessings. So if you ask God like that you wanna be blessed with um, a real love, but you're telling him like, I don't know how soon you're gonna hook it up, so I'm gonna just do this for now, and when you're ready, you'll let me know. That's not how it works. Like, if you trust that you deserve something, you need to go after it by not settling for less in the meantime. Like, there is no meantime. You put yourself in the right frame of mind, the right position to accept the blessings, and you don't settle for less. Because settling for less says that you're not ready, you know? And I've seen people do that all the time, and I try not to judge because we all have, like, some people just can't handle being alone. Some people cannot handle heartbreak the same, and... Some people, I, I mean, I get it, it's unfortunate.